Hi there guys and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at some advanced GPU pass-through techniques. We'll be looking at how to get the best performance out of your GPU and also we'll be looking at how to avoid getting those horrible code 43 errors. So, sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Well hi there guys, so with Christmas out of the way now, I thought I'd talk a little bit about passing through a GPU, because as we all know, when setting up a VM, if we want to get as close to bare metal performance as possible, then passing through a GPU is a must. But when we're passing through our GPUs, are we actually doing everything we can to get the best performance out of the card? Well, let's have a look at a GPU. I've got a GTX 1080 Ti in my server, so I'm going to take a look at that. So a modern GPU is more than actually just a GPU. It's a GPU and a sound card in one device. And when we hook it up using an HDMI cable or a DisplayPort cable, we can get sound out of the monitor or the TV, whatever we plug it into. Some of us prefer using the onboard motherboard sound or even a separate sound card altogether. Now when setting up a virtual machine, it's important to think how things work in a real bare metal computer. On a bare metal machine, when we don't want to use the GPU sound part, we just don't enable it as the default sound out in the operating system. We don't try and physically remove the chips out of the GPU so the sound no longer works. But this is a common mistake I see people doing when setting up a VM. Now you're probably thinking, come on Space Invader, have you been drinking too much over Christmas? No one actually removes chips out of a GPU. So let's go across onto my server and set up a VM and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go across onto the VMs tab and we'll add a Windows 10 VM. Okay so when people set up the VM they give it how many CPU cores they want, they give it some memory, then they choose a the size for the hard drive and then when it comes down to graphics card they pick the graphics card that they want to pass through and then when they come down to sound card they think, right, I don't want the NVIDIA built-in GPU sound, I'm going to use my motherboard sound. And they choose it from the drop-down list here. So in effect, what they've done is they've done something that's impossible to do on a bare metal machine. By not passing through the GPU sound counterpart, what they've done in a virtual sense, they've virtually removed those sound chips out of the GPU. So yeah, whilst you might be able to start up the VM and it will display a picture and work, the trouble happens when we install a driver. The driver thinks it's impossible for there not to be a sound counterpart, and so it thinks there's something wrong with the GPU. And this can give us that dreaded error 43. This being especially true of NVIDIA GPUs. NVIDIA hate us using consumer GPUs in VMs. They don't think we should do it, and they like to do anything they can to detect if we're using it in a VM. So the very fact of having a GPU without the sound counterpart is only possible in a VM, that's a pretty big giveaway. So what we need to do is we need to add the GPU sound counterpart. So I'm going to add the NVIDIA here. And if we want to use another sound card, we click on the plus button here and we add the second sound card. So here I'm going to add back in the motherboard sound and I'm going to click on to update. So now we've got both the GPU and the sound counterpart added to the VM. But is that exactly the same as it would be in a bare metal machine? Let's have another look at the picture of our GPU. When we plug our GPU into our motherboard, it's got this one slot here, and it plugs into one slot on the motherboard. So is this true on our VM? Well, let's take a look. So let's go back and have a look at the VM. Let's look at the template. If we scroll down to the graphics card, we can see that the GPU here is 43.00.0, and the NVIDIA sound part is 43.00.1. So this is a multifunction device with the graphics card being dot zero and the sound being dot one. So let's scroll up and have a look at that in the XML view. So let's scroll down through the XML looking for that number four three because that will obviously refer to the graphics card here in the XML. Okay, so here's the first bit here. This part refers to the graphics card because we can see four three zero zero and function zero. Okay, one minute, let's just zoom in on this bit a moment. Now in this block of XML, 
we can see two address lines. The first one here with the bus 4, 3, the slot 0 and the function 0. This first address line refers to the address that the hardware is physically located in the actual server itself. And the second address line where it says bus 0, slot 5 and function 0. This is the virtual address where the hardware has been mapped to on the virtual machine's virtual motherboard. Note here in its virtual address, the slot is 5 and the function is 0. So now let's look down the XML a bit further and find the second part where it mentions the 4, 3, because that will be the sound part of the graphics card. OK, so again, the first address line we come across, the one with the bus 4, 3, slot 0 and function 1, this is the real location of the sound part of the graphics card in the server, and that's why it's on the same bus and slot, and that's why it says multifunction 1, because a graphics card, when it's got the sound bit built into it, it's a multifunction device. And that's why the graphics part is function 0, and the sound is function 1. OK, so now let's move down to the second address, the virtual address, where the sound counterparts map to. And if we see here, it's on bus 0, but the sound counterpart is on a different slot. It's on slot 6 and has a function of 0. So what's happened here is the graphics card's actually been split into two separate virtual physical devices. So basically, on bare metal hardware, this would be the same as plugging in the graphics part of the GPU into one slot on the motherboard and the sound part of the GPU onto a different slot on the motherboard. So this is impossible to do. And because this is impossible to do in real life, it can cause driver issues again. Again, in Windows, we can have code 43. And as well, if we're using a Mac OS VM, for example, in Mojave or Catalina, when we're passing through an AMD graphics card, if the device is split up like this, then the HDMI sound doesn't work. So in my opinion, it's always best practice to put the graphics and sound counterpart on the same bus and slot and set them up as a multifunction device as they would be in real hardware. And now to do this, it's really quite easy, but unfortunately, it means us editing this XML. So the problem being, once we've edited XML, then if we change anything else in the template using the GUI, then the custom XML is lost and reverts back to what it was previously. But anyway, let's edit this XML and make the pass-through GPU appear as it would do on real hardware. OK, so let's go up to the graphics part first and to the second address line here. We can leave this pretty much as it is on slot 5 and function 0. But after the function 0 here, let's put a space and then write multi function equals and then in single quote on and then close single quote. And what this does is it tells the virtual machine that this is a multi-function device. So now we can go down to the sound counterpart here and we can change the slot from being number 6 here to matching to be number 5. And then we change the function to be 1. So now this matches the physical hardware because it's a multi-function, the sound is function 1 and the graphics is function 0. And just as in the real hardware where both parts are on slot 0, in our virtual hardware both parts are in slot 5. So we want to click on to update. So with that edit done, we can just start up the virtual machine and the graphics card will be passed through, but as it would be in a real machine. Now, I just want to show you something. I want to remind you that making an edit in the template now, if I was to add these two cores, for instance, and then update the virtual machine, going back and looking at the XML view and going down to the part that we edited before, we can see here that it's no longer a multifunction device and the sound counterpart is back on bus 6. So if we make a change in the template, we always have to come back afterwards and put this back as a multifunction device after every single edit. So just remember to do that if you make any changes in the future. OK, so just say you've made all of these changes and you're still getting an error 43 in Windows. What else can you do? Well, if we go to the main tab here and I click onto where the flash drive is and scroll down here, you can see that I'm booting my server as legacy. Now I could boot it in UEFI, but I find with pass through, I always get better results when I boot in legacy mode. 
My advice is, is if your motherboard can boot in legacy mode, always boot in legacy mode. And only ever boot in UEFI if your motherboard doesn't support a legacy boot. As far as I'm aware, there's actually no advantage to booting up in UEFI mode. Now I know with our servers, we always feel we want to have the latest and greatest thing, but if UEFI boot doesn't add anything to the mix, there's no point doing it. So let's stick to legacy where we can. Now another thing that can improve the performance and make your VM work a bit better is to pass through your GPU's graphics ROM BIOS. Now of course sometimes we actually have to do this to get a picture out of the GPU at all. And that's normally with NVIDIA graphics cards when they're the primary and only graphics card in the machine. However passing through a VBIOS can actually have other advantages as well. Now you see here I've got a few VBIOSes for a 1080 Ti. And so I can actually choose a VBIOS which wasn't actually specifically for my Founders Edition card. And so why would I want to do this? Well using a different VBIOS I can actually make my card run a little bit faster. Yeah sure I could always overclock the card in Windows using something like MSI Afterburner. However although it's easy to overclock a graphics card in Windows, in other operating systems it can be more tricky. So using a different VBIOS can be a way of getting a little bit more performance. But of course, just as overclocking a graphics card has its risks, so does doing this. So because I made a change to the VM and added in the VBIOS in the template, I'm now having to re-add in the XML to put the graphics and sound counterpart onto the same slot as a multifunction device. So when you add your VBIOS to a VM, you've got to have the correct type of file. You can download these from Tech Power Up. And if you're using an AMD graphics card, you can use it just as it is, how it's downloaded from that site. However, if your GPU is an NVIDIA GPU, then these VBIOSes that are downloaded from Tech Power Up can't be used just as they are. And that's because they have a header on them at the beginning of the VBIOS. But it's really easy to edit this out and create a working VBIOS. And if you want to see how to do that, then see my other video here, which will show you how. Okay, so finally, just one last thing before we wrap this up. When we're adding a new VM and we choose a template, say Windows 10, and we add everything we want, our CPUs, our memory, our hard drive, and our graphics card and sound counterpart, and of course, not forgetting the VBIOS. Now, we don't have to use the default machine type that the template tells us to. By default, Windows will use an i440FX chipset. But personally, I find, especially for AMD graphics cards that are passed through, a Q35 chipset works far better. So always experiment and see what works best for you, and see what gives you the best performance and results with your VM. Okay guys, so that's the end of this video, and it's time for me to go. I want to thank all of the guys who make these videos possible. Thanks to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so, so much for all of your support. And thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then please hit up that like button and share the video with anyone who you think would like it. Oh, well, it's pretty late here. I'm about to fall asleep. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.